Why have renewable energy companies increased their prices? If you're currently on a 100% renewable energy company deal or with a company that buy only 100% renewable energy, you may be asking yourself, if gas prices increased, why is the cost of your electricity price also increased? Is the electricity company, the green energy company, just profiteering and making extra money out of you? Or is there real reasons behind this? Well, today's video, we're gonna answer those questions. And if you are affected by the cost of living due to energy price increases, we're gonna be talking about how you may be able to buffer those effects a bit better. Now, to some people, the reason why energy costs have increased is obvious. And the, to other people, they're wondering, is it energy companies just trying to profiteer off you? Is that why the renewable energy companies have increased the prices, just to make extra money out of you? Well, it's kind of half true, but not. And to understand this, we really need to understand why energy prices have increased. Now, for that answer, we need to understand how the energy market works. Now, I like to think of it, the best way to think of it is like a stock market. So think of gas, oil, wind, solar, nuclear, hydro, you keep going, all these as different stocks. But they're stocks that are trading for the same type of business, same customers. So think of it this way. If you see coal go up 200% in you know, cost, gas goes up 200% in cost, then what happens is more people want to buy the wind stock and the solar stock. Now, even though they are currently the cheapest stocks, what happens is more people want to buy it. So there's less of these stocks available, which means the prices surge and the price of those stocks increase. Therefore, essentially, the more, the more other prices go up, the more wind and solar also go up because people are competing in the same stock market for the same demand. Now, the reason why I refer to it as stock is the way your energy company works is they go to this stock market every day or in advance and buy your energy. Now, some energy companies, if you sign up for a 12 month deal, will buy your energy 12 months of in advance from this stock market or a local supplier or a wind farm and say look we want to buy 12 months and we'll guarantee this price that will pay for you this energy for 12 months and that's how some energy companies buy their energy some energy companies buy, buy it day by day because this stock market is day by day half an hour by half an hour minute by minute it is very 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 fluctual and changes all the time some energy companies hedge the bets they buy six months maybe in advance and then a couple of days in advance of your energy or they'll buy slots for so much customers but not others and that's how the energy market works now you can imagine that if gas has gone up 500 percent wind energy is not going to stay down there it's going to climb up as more people want to buy wind so they can match 100 percent of their customers needs from this daily energy buyout now some energy companies do own their own turbines which we're gonna get into in a minute. When I wrote this script, I took a screenshot of the day's energy from Grid Carbon, which is an app I use to see how green and dirty the grid is each day. And I actually use this to depend when I plug my electric vehicle in, even though I got cheap energy at night, I tend to try and use the Grid Carbon app to plug in that night that's not only cheap, but also low on CO2. But forget that part, because you might not be bothered. What I'm gonna look at now is the day's energy for that day that I generated these stats. Now, when I looked at this, it was 44% of all energy in the UK was coming from gas, 15.9% from nuclear, about 15% from solar, 5% from coal, 3% from wind, and then a mix of other sources. Now, if you are currently on a 100% renewable energy deal, it doesn't mean at the time that you're using that energy that the energy you're actually using is coming from a wind turbine. There is no special cable from your house to a wind turbine. If the grid is full of coal, full of nuclear energy, there's a chance that you're using some of, those, some of that power source when you're turning on. And it's very, very complicated on how that works. Now, your energy company will try and match 100% of your usage to green energy, which means that although the power that might be coming directly to down your power lines to your house might not be clean, the energy company means that the energy you're buying for you is green. Now they do this by a couple of methods, buying their own turbines, regnos, long-term contracts, but essentially the more, in, the more people that are on green tariffs, the more investment that goes into green energy, because green energy companies have to buy those green energy certificates and energy generation, which means that more green generation is put on the grid and you'll see more of it day by day. But it is extremely complicated.
As we can see, gas plays a big part in power generation, not just here in the UK, but other parts of the world rely heavily on gas turbines to make electricity. Unless it's Norway, which is a special case which we'll ignore for this video, but most places in the world use gas turbines to generate energy. Now, the price of gas has been increasing and obviously the biggest increase of gas recently has been to the tensions in Ukraine, the problems with Russia, and that has a whole different complications on the why gas has gone so expensive. But gas was already expensive and climbing in price before the Ukraine issue. And this is a long-term issue that's been going on since lockdown. And to explain exactly what that means, there's a little power plant in Japan called Fukushima. I don't know if anyone remembers it, but there was a bit of a nuclear disaster there during a tsunami. And that nuclear disaster meant that Japan didn't want to use any more nuclear fuel anymore. So pretty much mothballed all their nuclear reactors, which meant that they were willing to pay more for gas, imported gas, than anyone else. So all the gas suppliers that export gas tended to send it to Japan because they were being paid crazy amounts of money so Japan could power their country while they were mothballing their nuclear reactors. Now, when Japan did this, uh, some other countries in the world, um, like Germany, decided they also didn't want to use nuclear reactors anymore. And they also bought more and more gas, in turn, pushing up gas prices yet again. And this has been a bit of a catastrophic issue for gas there. But it also has some other complications. Now, we had lockdown. Now, lockdown meant that there was not a lot of generation needed on the, on the market. So not a lot of gas was being used, not a lot of nuclear was needed wind wasn't needed so a lot of governments especially here in the uk asked their nuclear reactors to turn down now this is unprecedented nuclear reactors normally run flat out 100 percent of the time you don't turn off a nuclear power generation it costs a lot of money they get paid a lot of money even if they don't generate electricity so you leave them running 24 7 but lockdown meant that we didn't need the power it was making the the, the power grid unstable because there was too much Factories were closed, people weren't using power. It was a lovely summer uh, in the UK, so there was lots of solar as well. So they asked the turbine, some of the nuclear generation turbines, to turn off completely. And while they were turned off, they did some inspections and some maintenance work on them. And some of them were found to have some problems with them, cracks, holes, damage, which meant that they couldn't come back online for quite some time while they got repaired. Some of them actually had to be decommissioned completely to ne never be used again. And then the next problem came for gas, which was we unlocked. And as we unlocked, economies rose and soar quicker than predicted, way quicker than anyone predicted that you know we'd come out of recessions and the economy was booming, especially here in the UK, and factories were reopened, and which meant that we needed to start those turbines up and gas turbines you know you burn it it makes steam it turns a turbine it's very reliable which meant we were buying more and more gas more and more gas more and more wholesale price increase okay you might be thinking okay nick that's all very well gas prices increase we understand that you've explained that but i'm on a 100 percent renewable energy company and they don't use gas and you've just told us that solar and wind are the two cheapest forms of electricity generation so surely even with that increase of gas, and even with the increase on that stock market price of, of wind, our energy companies who own these turbines are just pocketing the money. Well, some suppliers probably are. If they own a lot of wind turbines, they probably are pocketing some of that increased profit. But can you actually blame them? We'll explain that a little bit more detail later on in the video. But you've got to also think that they might not generate all your energy from their own turbines that they own. They might have to still buy some of that energy from that wholesale market that is constantly increasing due to other prices increasing. You've got to remember that if you're on a non-renewable energy company, so your company doesn't buy, you know, it's not a 100% renewable energy. They are a company that buy coal or other forms of generation, burning generation. Why would they not buy wind and solar if they're cheaper? because they will, they want to recoup, they want to make profits. So they will buy other non 100% renewable forms of generation, in turn, 
making more demand for those wind and solar generation, increasing prices again. The difference is energy companies that are 100% renewable are restricted to only buying renewable. The non-renewable companies can take the pick of whatever they want to meet 100% cost demand at any point of time, which means sometimes at peak hours they might have better choice of flexibility of costs than wind and solar farms. And as we move towards more renewable technologies, we should see prices fall steadily from the more wind and, t and, and solar on. But that's not going to happen overnight. These prices are here to stay for quite a lot of time. Now, I want you to pretend you're, you're a wind farm owner. You own, I don't know, seven wind farms and you've got lots and lots of wind that you sell to this wholesale market and to other energy companies. You're constantly selling the energy you're generating. You don't have customers, you have energy companies that you sell to. And let's just pretend that one day you're selling your energy for X amount and then the next day another energy comes around and offers you double the money than you currently sell your energy to the other company for. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to sell it to the highest person. Just like if you do a job at the moment and someone offers you double your wage to do exactly the same job that you're currently doing, you're going to quit your job and you're going to take the new job for the more money. That's capitalism. That's what people do. That's what companies do. It's not greed. It's just what people do. It's, it's, it's logic. You know, you're going to sell the same service for exactly the same work then you're going to take the extra money. Now, it does get more complex than that because, like I said before, some energy companies buy your energy in advance. So they could have already bought the energy from this wind turbine. But wind turbines might have a contract with your energy company to say they'll supply that energy company for one year at this cost. But there's a clause in that contract that says if energy wholesale prices increase by X, the contract is void, which means that your energy company now has to buy your energy at the higher wholesale rate, even though they're already supplying you at the lower price that you agreed for 12 months. So back to the greedy energy firms that own their own turbines and are profiteering off the back of you. Well, are they really profiteering off the back of you? I mean, can you blame them for increasing their prices? Everyone else has increased the prices. Their competitors are renewable have increased their prices. Are they going to just sell your you energy at a much vastly reduced price compared to the rest of the market because if I owned 100% of my turbines and I could sell to my customers at a reduced price or I could not agree any more contracts with new customers and just sell the energy to my competitor energy company and not deal with the frustration of, of customers and chasing payments and the possibility of price caps being lower than the cost of energy is to buy well I'd opt for the easier option instead some energy companies have opted for the harder option which is they've increased your price they deal with the upset of having to increase your price but it also means that you carry on getting power from a company that are owning and buying their own turbines now you can buffer the effects of the energy costs at the moment and there is a couple of ways we're going to go through now now one of the ways if you're not already on a smart deal if you've not got a smart meter then i fully encourage you to get a smart meter fitted and once you've got a smart meter fitted if you're not already on a smart adaptive tariff like the Optimus Go tariff that I recommend they do electricity from 7.5p at half 12 till half 4 and then a peak rate which is at the moment the time of the publisher of this video is about 35p if you go to evnick.com forward slash energy there's a link there for £50, you get £50, I get £50 for referring you, and they do that special deal. They also do some other special, more inventive tasks like Agile, but at the moment, with the way wholesale prices is, unless you're willing to take a risk and ride that wave, I advise that you just go for a deal like Go. Now, the reason I'm telling you to go on a deal like Go is for the other methods I'm going to tell you on how to buffer it. Now, you could fit a home storage battery. A home storage battery you could then charge up overnight on this cheap 7.5p electricity and use that during the peak times, and that would lower your overall cost of electricity. If you have an electric car and you're not on a smart tariff, then you're throwing away money. I've done plenty of videos on how charging at cheap rates at 7.5p will lower your overall kilowatt usage for your entire house. It is a big difference. You can also do washing at night during these cheap tires, dishwashers, or any other high-powered devices that use a lot of energy, or storage heaters, for example, could also use this energy during this cheap rate electricity. The other ways of buffering it would obviously be fitting solar, which is obviously quite expensive. 
However, if you can't have solar, uh, you can't buy a battery, there is other methods available to you, and one of them is buying a part-owned turbine. So you can actually be an owner of a proper large wind turbine. Now, this is offered by a cooperative um, system, and the company that organised it are called Ripple. Now, there is a link down below in the description. I am a Ripple investor. I've invested my own money. I bought some in their first turbine. I've now bought some in their second turbine. I have about, I think, 15% of my overall power needs invested into Ripple, but you can invest your 100% of all your energy costs into Ripple, and they basically, whatever your turbine generates, they will credit your bill by the energy that your turbine generates. And it is a really, really clever idea. If you can't have solar, can't afford solar, they do have a couple of options and financial options, but be in mind, it is a financial investment Make your own calculations, do your own sums and work out if it's good for you and if the risk is worth it for you. Thank you very, very much for watching this week's video and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.